Uh, this blog is about surviving family domestic violence and also the abuse that, that probably trickles in, uh, all that, the whole, the whole, the whole issue itself. Um, where I'm at with, uh, domestic violence recovery is it's been real back and forth, um, especially when you're thrown back into it when you're not even see it coming. Um, and I know a lot of women are more outspoken about domestic violence, so this is really a general topic why I call it family domestic violence because everyone indirectly or directly around you is affected. And uh, it affects your everyday life. That's just the bottom line. There's nothing good about what comes from domestic violence, whether it's in the family, whether it's with a, directly at you or you're around it or you know a friend or family that is suffering through it everyone is affected in some way people don't know how to act around it they don't know what to say so these are a lot of the things that are going to help unravel some of those questionable things that awkwardness it's normal it's all part of the domestic violence um especially when you want to approach somebody that you know that's being abused and you just feel like you don't know what to say or do to help neighbors uh, a lot of the acquaintances, of course, people catch on that something's going on or you know, some people don't. But I, I'm going to speak to those people who do know what's going on and know, been around it or seen it. Or, you know, maybe you see that there's some friendly moments and maybe you think, OK, th maybe things are getting better. Remember, when once somebody's abused, those friendly moments are just another way to survive it. And it, it really does keep women back in especially women, I'm speaking for women and children, especially keeps them in the abuse longer because you do look for those moments when you think, okay, there's a little relief in the process. The problem is once somebody starts abusing somebody, even though there's moments of relief, that's just another part of the domestic violence that comes with it. I mean, I'm not advocating that women stay is what I'm saying. Having lived through it, having living through a lot of it still, I'm not an advocate about staying <sighs> only because I have left and I know what it is to have that freedom. I know what it is to enjoy life. I know what it is to start over. But I have to tell you, after years and years of it, it just starts to really, really take over other areas of your life that you never thought it would do that. So I know a lot of women are used to hearing this, and especially in domestic violence shelters where women know they're encouraged to leave. Uh, the average, statistically, the average woman that stays in abuse that leaves is about seven to eight times they leave uh, the abuse on the average, seven to eight times till they permanently leave. So that's actually part of the normal cycle of abuse. And I uh, apologize for my cold. I'm suddenly got a <laughs> runny nose. Um and it really does leave a lot of people helpless. And it's, it's typical of abuse. Again, this is where it gets kind of tricky and awkward because the people who really, really want this to be over have to understand that this is where you got to be kind of instrumental in doing whatever you can to help. And I recommend always making sure that, that your friend or family member that's being abused always has some kind of gas money or or knows that you can, they can go right directly to you. And that will be you being taking the big step and saying, uh, without even really probing anybody, I know that some things are going on right now. I want you to make sure that there's always an envelope of money in this such and such place. And if you need it, just grab it, you know. And uh, I, I know this because I've lived through that part of it. And I and I also been there to help people in that respect. I don't ask questions. I don't get into all that. It's probably not the time or place to do it anyway, especially when somebody needs the money. You just don't want to probe them. You know that things are not good. Um, and it's nice to kind of be anonymous in that way too. So a lot of people take the extra initiative. And this is for the neighbors and people out there who really feel like they want to help. But they don't know how to. If there's some way that you can give an envelope of cash to that girl or or that uh, 
young woman that's going through this, and especially if they're, they have children, I recommend that. I recommend that you find a way to give money anonymously if, if, the, if you feel more comfortable because women always, always <laughs> have something going on when it comes to money. There's court costs involved and gas, money, food, basic necessities. And basically what ends up happening is women really end up with the clothes on their back. That's really where it ends up. Um, I've lost thousands and thousands of dollars in furniture and personal items in the process I've been stolen from. So, you know, by the time you get to a shelter and maybe it's the last round where you're finally at the point where you can't handle it anymore. By that point, you probably lost almost everything you've had and and you've lost a lot of yourself in that process. So, um, any little gesture of help is just so reassuring and it feels right to do. And you know what? You may not ever see it come back to you directly, but it will. And I'm not one to say pay it forward at all, <laughs> but I'm saying that there's a real great thing that comes of this when you're proactive. And that's just for those people that feel helpless. And, and if money isn't the way, you know, maybe there's another way to be a resource or support where you may not be able to talk them into doing the right thing, but you can listen. And that might be hard for some people, but um, let them talk, let them talk for hours, it, whatever it takes. But if you ever want to be of any resource or any help, there are a few ways to do that anonymously and also proactive. Okay, getting right down to some of the other things that happen with domestic violence is this numbness comes over the purse, the victim. And, um, it's, it's quite, it's quite a very lost feeling. And I, I, I've only known this to do this is pray, pray through it. And I hope that most people generally speak and have a walk with the Lord in this, because you're going to need everything you got that you can get from the Lord. And I would mean, don't just pray, hit your knees, just get on your knees and just pray your way through it. Um, because nothing can be resolved if you say anything nasty. And I've been known to lock myself in the house and, and, and my, in my bedroom and start praying before I even approach the abuser. Because I know that words have a way of stinging. And believe me, by the time you've been through this enough, you, you've been hurt. You're, you're so injured at that point that almost anything can come out of your mouth. And, and this is why a lot of people abuse because there's, there's something deep within that person that's very hurt and uh, you don't want to be the one to go spouting off things. Sometimes it's better just get on your knees and start praying and watch what you say to that abuser, especially you don't know what will set them off. Um, it's very hard to do that when you're angry and hurting, but I would hope that somebody smarter, we can be wiser than that. And, and get as far away from that abuser as possible because a lot, even in, in the Bible, and I know a lot of people are real big on this biblical thing, and it's a very, very difficult one for a lot of women. Um, they say, well, it says in the Bible that it shouldn't divorce for any reason but adultery. But, um, you know, abuse is, it, it's mentioned in there. You know, it says flee a hot tempered man in the Bible. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince anybody, but I think that's a hard one for a lot of people to really pin down. And I, I, I really want to get into more specifics in another video about that because I don't have the specific scripture. But uh, to be honest with you, that recovery, it doesn't have to take long. Once you get into the program, and I, and I can say I've successfully been through the journey and recovered, only to have the domestic violence show up two years later, um, unsuspectingly, but I, I kind of saw all the signs of it coming back into my life, uh, with the same abuser, of course. Um, I would really, really consider, and I know a lot of people are very weary about going to court, but if you cannot go to court alone, and if you think you're stronger than the average person, well, good luck to you, because I, I am not recommending I think you should always have some solid advocates behind you to really keep you going through it and um, I know it's one of those things once you let up once you've done the, the legal part of it you know as far as initiating police reports or anything like that um, 
I would never just stop at that. You know, I know, I know that's very difficult, but pursuing this means you're fully committed to doing something to change this. Okay. I know that's very, very difficult for women, especially when you care about somebody, but the worst thing you could do is stay in it and be more abused and not have the legal responsibility to act. You know, and when we're on the topic about what's biblical, it is also unlawful. And anything that is unlawful is not, it's not something you should, it's not something you should go take upon yourself. Okay. This is where women get in trouble. Okay. And I'm only speaking for women. I know there's a lot of men that go through it, but the, this, the majority of abused, uh, individuals are women and children. And, and unfortunately children are neglected in this process too. They're, they're very much, very much have issues coming from the abuse. A lot of the tension and stress can be taken out on kids too. So you have to understand kids are much as much a part of the abuse cycle as they are witnesses to it too. And uh, it's very, very intricate and it's very difficult for kids because they just want their mommy to be okay. And that's really important to know, acknowledge. And children do get lost in all that, and they do get very scared because they're uh, they're in so many unfamiliar situations themselves, and you just got to reassure them that they're going to be okay, and then you know just always make them make sure that they're feeling safe initially. You know, children especially need to know that they're going to be safe, and they will know by the tone and the way you approach your situation, and that's what I mean by legal. Once you get the legal process going, the kids are going to get their needs met in some way, some fashion, I believe, as long as you're doing the structured counseling and and reassuring them and also making sure that they feel safe, getting out and doing activities, outings, be normal. And, and, And I stress this, try to get your life back into some kind of normal pattern. Make sure that you stay on a school schedule homework schedule that is vital because as long as that is something that you can take wherever you go being in a structured schedule especially with the help of a a victim's crisis center they will be there to support you all through it and listen there's there's a lot of problems that happen that I would rather not get into but I think that sometimes what happens is when women are going into a battered women's shelter they're going to get their needs met initially but really, you got to be proactive. You should stay busy as much as possible. I know there's a lot of downtime in women's shelters, but that's when you should be getting rested, taking some kind of vitamins, getting into some kind of routine. There are a lot of the safe areas that you go to are safe enough where a woman could go walking eventually, get into a habit of getting some exercise. Because there's a lot of people, they they do get caught into that cycle where, you know, you, you let other things distract you by the time you get to the shelter a week or two into it, you know, other things to become, take, take precedent. But listen, your life is changing for the better. So continue that process. Don't get sidetracked with other women relationships. Remember your objective for the shelter and remind yourself this daily. And all women should know this is that while there might be new friendships forming, your main objective is to get through the recovery, get into the counseling, stay focused, because there's a lot of things that happen in the process of this that can distract you. And and finally, I just want to end it with this, that um, it's once you leave, it, hopefully that's a foolproof guarantee that you can stay, stay left. A lot of things do drag women back into it. And honestly, it's always either comes down to money or home. Or, you know, you're just scared. And um, it is going to be scary. There's going to be times that you're going to feel more scared than others. But the longer I, st- I stayed away, the longer I gave myself a chance to recover. And I did. I, I shook through it. I got scared at many, especially the first month. But by the time I really left and got used to the idea and I my income started to adjust to the situation, Financially, things started to come together very quickly, but it did still take a while to crawl out of some things. And it doesn't mean the other things aren't going to pop up. But the longer I stay left, I have more clarity. I can make better decisions. And I just overall, my well-being. And I think that we attract 
healthier people. The healthier we become, the healthier the situations start to become too. And you'll start attracting different situations. You won't be attracting all this negativity. And honestly, when you stay left, a lot of things do start to change quickly. Continue on that route because when you find out you're almost through the worst of it, then you can really start planning for future. But it is a process. It is a step by step. And it's there are days that you're ache, you're gonna ache and you're gonna be scared. But for some of those women, it's it's not a it's not a big deal. But for some of us out there who get caught up in that cycle again and again, you're just gonna have to really, really tough that one out and I say pray. When I mean get on your knees, pray, do that. And I'm gonna finish with that and I hopefully pick up again with a second part or, you know, wherever. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll elaborate more on what I said today, but for now, that's, that's it. And I hope wherever you're at in this, that you, um, take serious, serious action. Don't stay in it. Don't stay in it. Don't allow it. Don't let it take over your life. And even if it does take over your life, pray your way out of it. Anything, just use your head. Okay, and God bless you. Wherever you're at in this, God bless you. I'm very, I'm praying for anyone that's going through it. Um, that's it for me. Good night.